What's up, YouTube? Slide 8 Fry here. So, uh, Doug Walker, Nostalgia Critic, upload a new, another review of Pirates. This time it's to the second film, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. And uh, obviously it's on Channel Awesome, and let's give it a watch. While we're at it, I think I might show maybe another clip from my own review of the first Pirates film, Curse of the Black Pearl. And um, there's that new project I had mentioned at the end of the video. I finished it over the weekend, last weekend, Sunday, the 5th. Anyway, let's uh, take a look at this uh, review from Nostalgia Critic. Check it out. Oh yeah, and that DK Oldies thing. I was considering making a short uh, about that scam, but that isn't really what this channel is about. Although there may be some people who aren't as familiar with video games who might want to know. Um, don't go to DK Oldies, just plain and simple. They are a scam. <clears throat> By the way, this Star Wars mug, these lightsabers are on because there's some hot coffee in here. You pour something hot into the cup and uh, the lightsabers light up. When I'm finished drinking this, you'll see that the lightsabers are no, um, no longer on. Let's get started with this review. This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Also brought to you by DoorDash. The hey, I work for them. The food you're craving <laughs> right now, right to your door. Guess what? I'm coming to Dublin. Come see me in Ireland and at Vatican, March 25th to, to the 26th. <laughs> and the weekend right after that, you can see me in Chicago at C2E2. It's March can't 31st to April 2nd. Oh, well. Hope to see you there. Maybe next time he comes. In the <laughs> month continues, and after the smash hit of the Black Pearl, Disney sensed they had a franchise on their hands and decided to give pirates not one, but two sequels shot back to back. Yeah. Because you know, Matrix did it so well. Right. Released in 2006, the hype around Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest was crazy. Everyone oh, yeah. had pirate fever, and despite the film not getting the best reviews, audiences still had a great time with it. Of course. And I guess I'm somewhere in between. This film has a lot of flaws <laughs> that are easy to point out, but the fun moments are really, really fun. Yes, they There's are. There's so many chases and lines and visual jokes that still stay with me years later, and I don't know if I'm still laughing at them after all this time. It must be doing something right. Oh, yes. But yes, even diehard fans of this movie can agree it's got some problems. So let's take a look at where it continues the fun and where it drops the cannonball. This is Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this happening? I don't know. Well, kids, I can already spot two mistakes. Can you? <laughs> Very good! Will and Elizabeth are back for absolutely no reason. Yeah, their story ended. It's Jack and his crew that was hinting at more adventures, but for some reason they're put back in the spotlight as Norrington 2.0 Cutler Beckett, played by Tom Hollander, arrests Will for aiding in Jack Sparrow's escape, on his wedding day, no less. Bad luck for the groom to see the bride before the wedding. This warrant is for Elizabeth Swan. My mistake. Arrest her. It's also bad luck to arrest the bride before the wedding. Ah. Cut to a prison where I'm sure it is, dead yes. prisoners into the water. <laughs> Once again, Jack Sparrow is given a pretty great entrance. Oh, oh, I forgot about that scene. I don't know why I should have. <laughs> I think only wrestlers have better entrances than him. He gets to no, his they didn't. We're pissed. He's wasted. Don't get me wrong, I, I used to watch WWE, I don't really watch it, but uh, once again, ooh, the lightsabers. But, um, no, there's some pretty great entrances from a lot of wrestlers in the WWE, but no, I actually don't think they had better entrances either. Captain Jack Sparrow's got the best ones. So much time, but he has the first clue to finding valuable... He gets to his crew who are pissed he's wasted so much time, but he has the first clue to finding valuable treasure. We're expecting something a bit more shiny. What is on that piece of cloth there? A penis. It is a drawing of a key. 
They set sail to find this key to unlock a mysterious treasure while Beckett makes a deal with Turner. He says if he brings back Jack Sparrow's compass, he'll let him go. Why? Well, it turns out the compass isn't broken, which added to Sparrow's enjoyable oddness. No, no, it turns out it's a magic compass that points to whatever you really want. This compass does not point north. It points to the thing you want most in this world. Yeah, there's a lot of stupid retconning like that in this. Speaking mm. of which, oh my god, that looks just like Orlando Bloom! Bootstrap. Yeah, this is something I forgot to mention when I was watching the previous reaction. Captain Jack Sparrow has a tendency to not always be completely serious when he says things. Like when he said to Norrington that I was rooting for you at the end um, of the first movie. Like, no he wasn't. He was clearly rooting for Will. But, so when he said, oh, you look, look just like him, you can even tell by the tone of his, of his voice there, he wasn't really being completely serious. So, I'm going to just point out, that's kind of a flaw in the Stalder Critics review. Although, I get it. He put a joke in there that's kind of funny, but it's like, to me, the joke didn't land as well as it could have because it's pretty clear that Captain Jack Sparrow was not being serious when he said that Will Turner looks just like his father. Bill Turner. Still in Skarsgård plays Will's father, Bootstrap Bill, the guy they said twice looked exactly like him. I swear you look just like him. It's a spitting image of old Bootstrap Bill. Well, that guy says that, but Captain Jack Sparrow, I'm telling you, was not being serious when he said Oh my it. god, that looks just like Orlando Bloom! Bootstrap Bill Turner. Still in Skarsgård plays Will's father, <laughs> Bootstrap Bill, the guy they said twice looked exactly like him. I swear you look just like him. It's a spitting image of old Bootstrap Bill! Come back to all us! I bought Fozzie and Kermit as identical twins in the great Muppet caper more than this. <laughs> and he warns Jack that Davy Jones is after his soul. You made a deal with him too, Jack. Raise the pod from the depths for you. Jones is terrible, and Leviathan will find you. He is the angriest of the monkeys. Once again, some editing was required this time. Uh, I am wearing this for a reason. When my wife and I went to go see uh, Jeff Beck and Johnny Depp in concert, we went to San Jose, which is a little less than two hours south from here. Um, traveled through Oakland to get there, and then traveled through San Francisco on the way back. Has the tour dates on the back. And, uh, anyway. Jeez, I've gotten too used to showing off. I was, like, trying to do a pose while holding the chair. Like, what am I doing? I'm only supposed to show off to my wife. Jeez. <laughs> anyway. Jack is marked and makes his way to an island where the crew is captured by a tribe that thinks Jack is a god who has to be cooked to be released. Will finds him mm -hmm. on that island next to, honestly, a very impressive set piece. Jack! Jack Sparrow! Ah, oh, yes, thank Captain. you. All the other Jacks on the island were confused. Why are you in this? Jack. Lom say say Unike. Sip step. Okay, so here's the thing. This entire section is pretty pointless. It's 20 minutes long, adds nothing to the story or characters. You could just have Will meet Jack at sea and accomplish the same thing in literally a minute. But... However, this is some of the most enjoyable stuff in the movie. Yeah, it the is. The slapstick is funny, the visuals are creative, the twisted sense of humor is great. Where's the rest of the crew? These cages we're in weren't built till after we got here. Ugh. So here's what I think. I think the movie should have started here. Yeah, I know I did this with Anastasia on Ghostbusters 2, but what if the film began with Will seeing the ship? You'd save 20 minutes in a movie that's been criticized, even by fans, for being too long. Because mm. weirdly, everything they set up is repeated again. The compass, that's all I need. Elizabeth is in danger. We were arrested for trying to help you. She faces the gallows. If you opened here, these scenes wouldn't be pointless. They tell us what happened in between movies and serve <laughs> as a fun, adrenaline pumping reintroduction to everyone. That's Imagine true, yeah. Elizabeth being introduced in jail right. and breaking herself out while explaining the film's plot again. You sent Will to get you the compass owned by Jack Sparrow. Imagine not wasting all this time with characters just talking about what they're gonna repeat in a little bit anyway. Really, all you'd miss is this cool intro from Jack, but honestly, imagine this was his intro. Wouldn't that kind of be even more attention getting? For a series that's said to get more and more complicated as it goes along, this would have been a very effective way to cut out a lot of fat. But like I said, though, it is pretty fun. What about Jack? I won't leave without him. Time to go. <laughs> Jack! Start the engine! Get it up! <laughs> 
Don't worry, kids. He tasted great. Ugh. They never Jack catch tells him. Will that he'll give him the compass, but only under one condition. If you will help me to find this. A penis? <laughs> he agrees, but Elizabeth is already several steps ahead as she escaped and is trying to find Will. We have a store we have bought. A young woman, by the look of it. I want you to search the ship and find her. Oh Christ, I'm not even a member of the crew and I can tell she's right there! <laughs> I always know the wind was going to blow you back to me one day. Jack makes his way to a witch doctor named Tia Dalma, played by Naomi Harris in yet another role where I said, holy shit, that was her? As they hope she can help them on their quest. We're looking for this. A penis. Don't worry, only one third of the review is that joke. She says the That's key too opens much. the dead man's chest, which holds the heart of Davy Jones, who gave it to a woman, not the sea. No, 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 I heard it was the sea he fell in love with. Same story, different versions, and all are true. The scene stands out for a sadly unique reason. It's the only moment in the movie where the writing is doing two things at once. She okay. talks about Davy Jones falling in love with a woman, and we find out in the next film that she's that woman. It yes. was a woman. That's changing and harsh and untamable as the sea. But unlike the first movie where a lot of info is snuck in to save time and makes rewatching a lot more fun, almost all the writing in this is what you hear is what you get. It's exposition with jokes and sometimes the same exposition repeated again. Bring back that compass or there's no deal. The compass, that's all I need, Elizabeth is in danger. You sent Will to get you the compass and by Jack Sparrow. That's one of the reasons I think it was a mistake to do these films back to back. They knew they had another movie so they didn't feel they needed to condense the writing. But because of mm. that, they spend way too much time explaining and there's little to no layers in the dialogue. Even the stuff they do build up, like the jar of dirt. This is a jar of dirt. Does come <laughs> back, but not in a clever way. Oh, come Again, on. Again, you can write this hilarious. out and miss nothing but a few memes. But okay, Skura, some of these memes were worth it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're told to find Davy Jones' ship, and sure enough they do, along with his crew and Davy Jones himself, played by Bill Nye. Yeah. You feel this. And I gotta give credit, Jones still looks pretty damn good. I know. While he's not quite the effects landmark something like Gollum was, he's still a pretty damn decent effect. With a cool design and strange mannerisms that only the guy who voiced Grand Santa could come up with. <laughs> so we've established my proposal is sound in principle, now we're just haggling over price. Price. <laughs> Did his mouth just fart? <laughs> I know, I, I, that fart's awesome. Price. <laughs> Anyway, um, honestly, <clears throat> I've heard many people say that Davy Jones is the greatest um, CGI ever made. I, is he? I'd actually love to know what some people think. Go but what Doug said there about Gollum, yeah, Gollum, he's, he was really effective. Um, like, even nowadays, he still looks good back in the Lord of the Rings movies that came out 20 years ago. Um... So, it's interesting because there are some special, there are some CGI effects that just look really amazing 20 years ago, but then there are some that don't, which reminds me, okay, I think I know what I want to show for uh, when I show a clip of my review, now that I mention that, but um, yeah, Davy Jones looks really good, he looks amazing, like his, his, his CG looks extremely convincing. Um, there's still obviously, they've obviously made improvements since then. Um, although some people have claimed that CGI got worse nowadays. I disagree. It's generally gotten better. It's just that when it is bad nowadays, it's like, it's expected to be a lot better because technology has advanced. It's 20 years later. Like, when the CGI looked bad in the 90s, of course it did. When CGI looked bad in the early 2000s, it was like, oh, it's kind of expected. But when it looks great, it's like, wow. <clears throat> so, because it could look good at the time, it should look great or even better now. So, when CGI looks bad nowadays, it really stands out more. Because there's no excuse for that. It should have improved over time. So, I don't believe CGI has gotten worse nowadays. People say that it has. It hasn't. It 
technically has gotten better. It's just when it is bad, it stands out more because it shouldn't be bad. Because bad is like 20 to 30 years ago. It sh There's no excuse for that. Anyways, I kind of just went off on a little tangent there but uh, about CGI. But anyway, let's continue the review. <laughs> there! Apologies, one of these holes had Taco Bell and this hole just butt cheeks it out. <laughs> Taco so Bell. Because we're in a LucasArts game and not a movie. Yet another side quest is established and... Oh, let me show you. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. What did I tell you? The lightsabers are disappearing. Because when this cup is hot, the lightsabers go up. And when it's not, the lightsabers go down. It's so cool. My wife got me this Star Wars mug on Amazon a couple years ago. We weren't even living here at the time. It was... I don't remember when it, she got it. It was like 2020 or something. I got a quick video of it on TikTok. I was considering making a short of it. Putting it up here as a YouTube short, but never did it. Anyway. Soon these lightsabers will be completely gone. <clears throat> well, not gone. I mean, the hilts will still be there. But, you know. Anyways, sorry to interrupt. I I'm going to have to back it up a little. Apologies, one of these holes had Taco Bell and this hole just butt cheeks it out. <laughs> <laughs> because we're in a LucasArts game and not a movie. Yet another side quest is established and Jack needs to get 99 souls to balance out his payment <laughs> to Jones while he also holds on to Will. Three days. <laughs> hey look, I found his clitoris. Oh. Go into commercial on that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Let's see how you do this time. Since people want me to watch the ad. Hello! Happy 2022! But it's 2023! Now listen to me very carefully. It is 2022. But it's 2023! Then you have stolen my year. I have what? a very particular set of skills. I will find you. And I will kill you. I think sure it just feels like the year disappeared. Indeed, good point. 2023 is already well underway. So don't wait any longer to level up your small business and set your year up mm. for success. Oh, I Get ahead I of the business. competition by using Stamps.com to mail and ship. Doesn't mm -hmm. Stamps.com let you print your own postage and shipping labels right from your home or office? Silence, I'll kill you. Okay. It's ready to go in minutes so you can get back to running your business sooner. It's a stress-free solution for every small business. Use Stamps.com to print postage wherever you do business. All you need is a computer and printer. They even send you a free scale so you'll have everything you need to get started. You can easily schedule it through your Stamps.com dashboard. Could use that. Set your business up for success when you get started with Stamps.com today. Should they sign up she at Stamps.com slash... Silence, I'll kill you. Okay. <laughs> sign up at Stamps.com slash Nostalgia for a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, plus free postage, and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com. Dot com slash nostalgia. Great, can I hang up now? Looking to reduce the fees for your restaurant deliveries? Alright. Before we continue, I would like to show you my wife's Etsy shop. Um, I do need her to... I'm going to help her get it refund uh, funded again, but um, anyway... Oh, I, I was trying to go to content, not dashboard. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure I put that in this description. So, uh, that would be her Etsy shop. Now, um, she actually needs me to help finance her Etsy shop again. So, I'm not sure if we'll see anything at the moment. Yeah, okay. So she actually uh, is selling on Etsy, on Etsy. I just have to put some money into her account so she can start selling again. But uh, check it out when you can. I'll make sure to show it when I put some money into it for her and then she could start selling her cro knitting and crochet. But anyways, check out the Etsy shop when you can. Great, can I hang up now? Looking to reduce the fees for your restaurant deliveries? Oh, the lightsabers are Dash gone now. Pass by DoorDash is the easiest way to unlock savings on your latest cravings on every eligible order. Do I talk Dash now? Pass is a membership from DoorDash <laughs> that offers unlimited zero dollar delivery. 
I don't actually put ice cream in my DoorDash bag. The reason why is because one time the ice cream melted and it totally ruined my bag. If they could put show them putting like just like a bag from McDonald's in there, that'd be fine because yeah, I'd put that in there. But you know, the ice cream, I don't put it in the bag. No. Not after what happened. Oh god, it melted the bag. It it left such a mess in there. Oh my god. Anyway, <laughs> moving on from that. Um, yeah, don't put the ice cream in the bag. It destroyed my bag. I had to get a new one. Fees from thousands of eligible restaurants, grocery stores, and convenience stores. I heard of that. Once you join, you'll save on each eligible order and receive DoorDash credits back on all pickup orders. That means more money back in your wallet. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi. It's not just savings on restaurant deliveries, flowers, pet supplies, groceries. Yep. Dash Pass has so yep. much more to save on than just your favorite meals. That's Get true, what yeah. what you want, when you need I it. I deliver Without those any meals upfront and flowers. And you'll have stuff. the ability to cancel your membership at any time with no hidden additional fees. Yep. You'll also enjoy the best of your neighborhood as you discover the new and best places near you. Did you disappear? Uh, or find ah! Get 50% off up to $20 value on your next Dash Pass uh, order when you sign up for a membership and redeem Critic at checkout. That's 50% off your first Dash Pass order up to $20 Definitely value with Critic. Say goodbye to delivery fees. Get Dash Pass with DoorDash today using Critic. When you've got zero delivery fees, you're free to get more. Start your free month trial today. I forgot why I called. I forgot why you're still breathing. Oh god, you're running, aren't you? That means I'm dead, doesn't it? Okay, I had a good life, DoorDash. Just go somewhere else. <laughs> Throw away your phone and go somewhere else. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't really use DoorDash as a customer. Um, my wife and I, we prefer to just have our home-cooked meals. <clears throat> it saves money that way. Um, but w when we used to live in a more crowded place and couldn't, we were never able to use the kitchen, we did use Dash Pass. It was very useful. Very handy. Um, and uh, it's convenient. I don't know if if we're doing work from if I was doing work from home or something I might use it again but um, I mean typically I just pack a lunch bag and take it with me and eat what's from there whether or I grab my thermos put some soup in it and eat that um, <clears throat> but uh yeah uh, Dash Pass is nice depending on the situation. It's better than just ordering just plain out DoorDash because if you order just DoorDash, you, there's like all these other fees like shipping. Well, not shipping, delivery fee, not shipping, delivery fee, tax, all this stuff. Dash Pass actually eliminates the delivery fee entirely, so it's completely worth it if you use it frequently enough, use DoorDash frequently enough. But as somebody who works for DoorDash, yeah, I enjoy doing it. You know, I get I basically set my own schedule. I, mean, I still got to put in as many hours as I can to make as much money as I can, but. It, it, it's good stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyways, why don't we continue? Hopefully uh, there isn't any lag going on. Doug plays Arkham Asylum for the first time ever every Friday on Twitch. We also have content five days a week. Hope to see you there. The awesome store is back open. For real this time! Yeah, sorry, okay. some behind-the-scenes stuff delayed it a little bit. But it's open now, and you can get DVDs, prints, and more. So go and check it out. So the crew goes to Tortuga to find 99 souls. Yeah, let's just put all the right references here. That works. <laughs> oh boy, if you were excited to see Will and Elizabeth return, guess which other crowd favorite they brought back? Commodore? No, not anymore. Weren't you listening? Yeah, Norrington was so popular in the first film, they're like, let's put two in this one! <laughs> yeah, I guess you couldn't afford to give him a day's head start, could you? With that said, Yikes. I'm a simple man, and I love bar fights that start for absolutely no reason. I will point out, um, one thing a Nostalgia Critic said that I completely disagreed with on the previous review is that, like, oh, so, uh, Elizabeth choosing Will uh, made Norrington change his mind about pursuing Captain Jack Sparrow. It's like, no, it had nothing to do with that. It was what Governor Swan said about sometimes uh, the act of a... What was the word? Sometimes the act of a pirate could 
be the right course. I forget what the words were. I mean, I, I saw that quote like a hundred times, like so many times, and I don't remember what the words were, but it was from that quote that Commodore Norrington decided to let Jack go. That Because he was like, because that allowed Com Norrington to realize, actually, Jack Sparrow really helped us out. It would be unfair to sentence him to death. That was the reason. So, again, I disagree with Nostalgia Critic about that assessment. I think he probably just put that in there as a joke, but that is kind of a flaw in his review. I got, I got to be honest. I'm a simple man. Yeah, I guess you couldn't afford to give him a day's head start, could you? With that said, I'm a simple man, and I love bar fights that start for absolutely no reason. <laughs> Seriously, a guy could be like, uh, I'll have the toast. The fight works! Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> Jones has freaking awesome ship. Seriously, did I mention yet everything around this character is designed great? Yes. Okay, seaweed shrek's a little weird, but whatever. Wheel is reunited with his father. Again, imagine we start 20 minutes later, and this would be your introduction to Bootstrap Bill. Wouldn't that be more interesting? It's my son. Probably. My flashes be old, I believe it is. I guess I do have to make up for many fatherly spankings. This is for the desolation of Smog. This is for that weird Three Musketeers remake. And this is for whatever the hell that third Hobbit movie was called. <laughs> Catches up. Those movies came out later. To know what he's doing there. Until I find this. A penis. Okay, maybe two thirds of the review. God damn it, man! Come on. <laughs> Here's a question I'll be asking a lot in the third one. What the hell? <laughs> the dead man's chest. Tree ship some call me. He reveals Jones has the key while back on Tortuga. Elizabeth gives away her disguise. Come to join me, crew lad. I'm here to find the man I love. I'm deeply flattered, son, but my first and only love is the sea. You may want to ask that sailor over there. I think women and seamen don't mix. <laughs> It should it be a dress or not? I happen to have no dress in my cabin. With a woman still in it. Norrington as well tries to work his way. Alright, you know what? I'm sure you probably already watched this video, but I'm going to allow you guys to see what that reference Sail is. Say over there. I think women and semen don't mix. <laughs> it's so perfect. Uh. It should it be a dress or nothing? I happen to have no dress in my cabin. With a woman still in it. Norrington as well tries mm -hmm. to work his way on board, though he does Men and semen don't mix. It should be a dress or nothing. I happen to have no dress in my cabin. With a woman still in it. <laughs> as well tries to work his way on board, though yep. he doesn't believe the stories of the dead man's chest. You don't actually believe him, do you? How would we find it? I can't believe you're not taking me seriously. It's the pig shit, isn't it? It's the pig shit. Meanwhile, Will and Jones <laughs> are playing Lying Dutchman with dice and again. While Jones is great to watch, Will is so goddamn boring. Seven fives. Eight fives. Like, I am trying to care whenever he's on screen, but having even the slightest interest in him is like advanced trigonometry. I just don't see how I'm supposed to do it. I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't mind him. He gets the key from around TV Jones's neck while he sleeps, which I have to admit makes this badass character look pretty dumb and lame. And meanwhile, Elizabeth has to wonder, does she actually love Jack? Yeah, the notion that was literally used as a joke in the last film. It would never have worked between us, darling. No kidding. Is now being presented as a legit possibility. There was a time when I would have given anything for you to look like that while thinking about me. I don't know what you mean. Oh, I think you do. Oh my god, I am so telling the other pirates. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> he escapes off the Dutchman, but Jones sends the Kraken after him. Which honestly is another pointless scene. It's been talked about, teased earlier. It's going to be the climax of the film, and Liam Neeson doesn't even announce it. Why do we need what? to see it pointlessly take down this ship just to have Will get right back on the Dutchman? It's not even that great an effect. Like, it's passable, I guess, but not enough for two long major action sequences around it. Oh, wait, it was to honor the true victims of the slaughter, 18th century fashion. <laughs> no, really, they cut to this dress twice. This movie just loves to show stuff so it can show stuff. Hello. You're such a butt. Hey, ass butt. Penis. Wonderful, glorious penis. 
Oh my gosh. It's mine! Yes. <laughs> and you had to wash your heads twice because of the PB&J. And now she will eat her PB&J with chopsticks because we're out of those tongs that she you would normally use. I ate everything with chopsticks. I had my pop tart with chopsticks. That's I didn't drop it once. There you go. Well, good point. <laughs> we also like to eat our pizza with forks, which I do now because she taught me that. It gets a little messy on the hands, yes. It really does. It really does get a little messy on the hands. I am never going to finish recording this, apparently. Uh, my wife needed to come back to the kitchen to uh, make herself a PB&J after she had, uh, I guess, not enough, to, not, not enough breakfast earlier. Um, <laughs> she decided to, to record some of herself. I'm not sure what I'm going to include the goofy stuff we recorded in the full video or in, in a members only but um maybe i'll include some here some in there but all right let's finally continue this video and get to the end speaking of which let's dive more into elizabeth's psyche i guess i just thought i'd be married by now i'm so ready to be married who frickity who <laughs> Gives a shit. It's obvious they have no idea what to do with Will and Elizabeth, so they're just like, I don't know, she likes him now. Maybe? <laughs> Did she say something about a corset? Yeah, we were done! We don't know what they're doing here either, we're doing the best we can. <laughs> At last, they finally get to the dead man's chest, and when I say they, I mean everyone. Will, you're all right, thank God! How did you get here? I don't know, the script is bonkers. <laughs> Everyone tries to backstab each other to get the chest, and yeah, this is where the film gets fun again. Yeah, it's a I lot of fun. I barely here. remember what led up to all this, but the visual humor and action pieces are really creative and pretty laugh out loud funny. <laughs> this whole fight scene is like watching a goofy sports cartoon. Oh, it just yeah. gets sillier and sillier, yeah, but so by fun. God, it's damn impressive the way they choreographed all this. Yeah. Scenes like this are what make me overlook the problems and say, you know, screw it, I'm having a good time. Indeed, yes. It's just a note. My heart was really the friends I made along the way. Oh, come on! Right. Ah, Bloom's one funny scene per movie. <laughs> Sparrow puts the heart in the jar of dirt, but Norrington takes it for himself. Once again, making the jar pointless. But you know what? This stupid scene does make me giggle. I got a jar of dirt. Yes, it does. I got a jar of dirt. And guess what's inside it? Um... I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. I don't know, I just answer one meme with another. Jones again releases the Kraken, causing yes. Jack to run away. Great, we got Will and Elizabeth to focus on for a while. Focusing on them is like being stuck at a party with a person you know but can't think of anything to talk about to save your life. It's not the worst, but god damn it. <laughs> Jack does return though and saves the day, but the movie remembers, oh yeah, it wants to be Empire Strikes Back, so it decides to leave Jack behind. Later tonight, darling. Hey! It's after you, not the ship. They spent the whole fight on a rowboat, and the Kraken still went after the ship. But oh, oh I can feel point. Disney Plus is getting ready to recommend something better. So I'll let it slide. Where's Jack? They like to stay behind to give us a chance. Bloody hell, I have help! I know you can hear me, you American horse toy rejects! You can't have this franchise without me! Disney double down on that! Jack is. Rejects! You can't have this franchise without me! Disney double down! Of course they don't want to do it, because it's a stupid idea. They're just doing it. They want to do it for the sake of, oh, woke, it's women. Like, no, people like women-led roles that actually are relatable, not just there for the sake of being there. Like, for example, the 2020 Mulan live-action remake is well-hated because she's a Mary Sue. She's unstoppable. She's perfect from beginning to end. But the 1999 animated Mulan film, and I know, most people who talk about the Disney Renaissance will say Little Mermaid, Aladdin, even more people will say The Lion King. Those are their favorites. My favorite is actually Mulan, because I love how the character is relatable. She 
struggles. She has difficulty getting along with the soldiers, difficulty actually adapting. She's weaker than the rest of the soldiers at first, but then <clears throat> uh, through some grit, bravery, determination, uh, she stands out among all the rest of the soldiers, and everybody appreciates her. Everybody actually thinks she's great. Um, it, it took struggle to get to where she was. That Those are the characters that we want to see. Um, we don't want to see someone who's perfect. Um, in, in fact, one issue I'm sort of beginning to have with Rick and Morty. Now, I'm going to be honest. I don't think I got the newest season available yet. I don't recall. There's five seasons now, right? Um, Hulu... It takes like a year for the next season to appear on there, which is annoying. Um, but Rick himself, Rick Sanchez, he's kind of becoming a Gary Stu. You know what I mean? Like, perfect woman who has no flaws as a Mary Sue. Perfect man who has no flaws as a Gary Stu. That's the terminology. And um, as much as I enjoy the Rick and Morty cartoons, I have been noticing that Rick gets out of everything to perfection. He doesn't make mistakes. He He's like perfect. And I actually am so noticing and kind of having a problem with that. You know? So, yeah. What's been going on with a lot of films today, like they're having the female-led roles be characters who don't have flaws and say that the flaws are because of what men obstacles men put in the way but that just isn't fair i mean everybody has flaws regardless of what of what obstacles there are you may think i don't have obstacles because i'm a white cisgender male but <laughs> i definitely do especially since i have mental disorders it makes it harder to focus makes it harder to stay on subject it makes it harder to do a lot of things um, it's a big disadvantage. I'm, I'm actually poor, believe it or not. I am. I'm not like so poor that I'm homeless. I can afford to pay the rent here by myself. Hopefully someday my wife can get her Etsy shop going. I'll have to help her get it back up and running again because you're supposed to pay a monthly fee to use it. It's only a dollar forty, so I, that's no problem. I'll send her enough to keep it running for many months and then hopefully she'll sell and then she'll be able to keep it running herself but like um yeah i mean i could afford to pay the rent here but still um basically barely getting by i don't have like a massive career or anything i work doordash i'm happy to do so because i make more money per hour with DoorDash than I did on, with pretty much any job I've had before because um, I deliver quickly. But, oh, nobody heard that, right? Anyways, but, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to have, like, a, a, a great career doing, actually, YouTube as a living, but YouTube is more of a hobby, and I'm monetized, and it's great, you know, but I've only made like a few hundred dollars on YouTube over the past few years. That's not that much. <laughs> um, while I can make $200 a day doing DoorDash. <laughs> you know, so <clears throat> anyway. Everybody has issues. Everybody has struggles. People like characters, and this is regardless of whether they're male or female. They like characters who have flaws. They like characters who have issues. They, have, they like characters who grow from weakness to strength. Um, they overcome real obstacles, not obstacles that they impose into the film for wokeness. And I'm going to also make it clear that woke is not even a bad thing. Woke is supposed to just be awareness of minorities and you know their struggles. It's just been turned into a negative thing because of how Hollywood has been approaching that and how they've been forced trying to force feed it down our throats in a way that is mean-spirited and spiteful and it makes woke appear to be bad that's the problem woke in itself isn't bad it's how it's being done by hollywood that's bad i know it's a lot of stuff to take in and i'm not even sure if what i said is actually completely clear anyways 
I think because of this part right here, that gives me... I think because of this part right here from the Nostalgia Critic review, I actually have another clip I want to show from my review of the first Pirates that I think you'll like uh, in regards to this. Hold down on that! American Horse Story rejects! You can't have this franchise without me! Disney doubles down <laughs> on that! Yes. Jack is gobbled up, Jones finds he's heartless, and Norrington gives Beckett a powerful weapon. If you intend to claim these, then you must have something to try. A penis. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Beckett Stop with that. Though, she says there might be a way to bring Jack back to life if they truly want him to return. Will you sail to the ends of the earth and beyond? seeing how you literally left him to die earlier. Do excuse me while I kill the man who ruined my life. Be my guest. But you know, no, I don't actually. Mm. This leads us on a cliffhanger with the return of a character that legit got a surprise out of me when I first saw Oh him. yes, everybody. What's become of my ship? Still trying to make Apple something. Now that was Dead Man's <laughs> Chest. I know I should know better, but I still kind of like it. Of course, it's good. It's, it's, it's hard, I think it just wants to be fun, and I think it does have enough of those moments. It does, you yeah. You wait a long time through a lot of pointless filler to get to it, but it does eventually deliver. I do wish they kept more focus and didn't bring back characters or story threads that aren't needed, but the visuals, mm -hmm. imagination, and of course humor balance it out enough for me. It's not the greatest of sequels by any means, but it did leave me having just enough of a good time. <laughs> Far more than what many consider the worst of the pirate films, and... Well, I guess we'll be getting to that one next. Next? Pirates Month? Sailing must continue. Do you feel dead? I am feared. <laughs> Price. The worst film was the fourth one. What do you mean next? The third one is definitely not the worst. It's, it's easily we're the fourth one. We're doing cameos for charity, and this month we're doing the Kennedy Creeker Institute. Kennedy Krieger Institute is internationally recognized for improving the lives of tens of thousands of children, adolescents, and adults with neurological, rehabilitative, or developmental needs. They do this through inpatient and day hospital programs, outpatient clinics, home and community services, education, and research. It's an amazing organization, and you can help them out. If you want a cameo from me saying happy birthday, good luck, or whatever, click on the link below and be giving to a good cause. If you're like, nah man, I don't want a cameo from you, you suck. Well, consider <laughs> checking out this organization anyway because it really is a great place with great people. Take a look at all the various ways you can help out. What's the quote you're going to put in there at the end? No quote. In the previous one, he did the, oh, uh, fresh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This took a very long time. Had a lot of interruptions. And I still want to show some clips from some of my own content to maybe entice some people to watch. So I'll try to do that really quickly. But not yet. Um... Uh, God damn it! Quit doing that weird thing you do. Um, and if you're wondering why I don't have this full screened, it's because there's a big black blob at the bottom of my screen that's blocking the view down there. You can't see it on here, but if you're looking at my actual screen, you'll see it. Like if you're like how I'm looking at the actual screen. But um, yeah, it, it's a physically it's a physical impairment, not something that's within the uh, display itself, I guess. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Um, whew, so, I have to do some editing on this one. But anyway, once again, yeah, um, Nostalgia Critic is always really funny with his reviews. Has put some great jokes and memes in there. Uh, it's a great time, and uh, while well, I don't fully agree with his review on this film, I do think that uh, he makes some good points. There are a lot of extra scenes that probably don't need to be there in Dead Man's Chest. Um, the film didn't need to be as long as it is, but anyway, <laughs> I'm still recording, sweetheart. What's up? What are you doing, babe? You're being so... Okay. Okay, fine. Anyway. Um, 
I do agree with Nostalgia Critic that the there are a few f- scenes that probably don't actually need to be in the film. Um, the film could have been shorter than it turned out to be, but it's still a really entertaining film. And some of these extra scenes are a lot of fun, like you mentioned with the um, that island of the that cannibalistic tribe. It's a really funny scene. Um, there's a lot of exposition. Doesn't need to be a lot of exposition. But I'd say overall, it's a really entertaining film, and that's what matters. Um, <laughs> hey. <laughs> I am Groot. <laughs> okay, I am Groot, yes. <laughs> I am Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> Another Disney property. Well, MCU, but yeah. <laughs> I am Groot. Okay. Hey, sweetheart. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this is interesting. So, <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> it's, it's so hard to focus right now. All right, all right, all right. All right. But yeah, I'd say it was a really good review. Uh, it was really fun to react. I looked forward to what he has to say about. Uh, oh my goodness! It's now that's the puppet. It belongs to Lilo or Stitch. I think it belongs to Lilo, but Stitch plays with it too. I don't remember, but <laughs> yeah, I got I got uh, my wife these uh, cute little puppets that she likes to play with, uh, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Okay, now I got on top of my head. <laughs> oh my goodness! Whoa, 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 whoa! Are they beating each other up on top of my head? Uh, that, that, that's, that's not very nice. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I was gonna show um, a couple clips from uh, my newer things, that that newer project. So why don't I get to that a little in a little bit? Um. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, anybody who's familiar with the Knuckles Approves memes will know what this is. If you're not, um, you might still find it fun anyways, because uh, Knuckles is really hilarious in these clips. Um, let's see if I can get to the parts I want to get to. Uh, he was just talking. To, oh, yeah. So, I, I, I honor Jeff Peck at the beginning with a clip and so on. Um, it's not really showing anything. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's weird. I'll pause it, though. Um, so I can get to where I need it to be. Okay. So, um, there's a few that I changed from it. Like, I'll show this real quick. <laughs> so, uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that one's not already existing. <laughs> meme! No meme! No meme! No meme! No meme! Uh, no meme! <laughs> hey, babe. Alright, so the, what I changed on that was uh, originally when I see it from other videos, it instantly does the volume being super high and it says ear rape, I chose to have it gradually rise and I changed the wording to say volume rising from hell, how could you fuck that up, uh, to make it a little easier to watch without it just suddenly blasting in your ears. Um, so that, <laughs> I love you babe. So that was one thing I changed um, and then uh, there was a new one I added, where is it, oh here it is, okay, I'll show you with the pirates, With what? I'll show what... I made Knuckles say about Pirates of the Caribbean in just a bit. It was a custom one I made. Approved. Uh, this is a normal one. Yes. It, well, I can't see it because I'm looking Meme. at the. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Let me. Uh, yes. Hey, gir- geez, the giraffe was up to my face. All right. So this one's a little. This one is a custom one I made for uh, which I used a couple times. Um, and just a little bit, just to Meme. show.
love you, babe. <laughs> All right, and uh, that's the only one I'll show from this. Maybe I'll show another clip that I did from the from from this video. Um, I wanted to show something um, from my pirates review briefly, if I c could. I'm a little distracted. I'll be honest. <laughs> How Please, it's not like Hey, 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 sweetheart, sweetheart, hey, hey, that was a lot of fun, babe, you, you, hey, come back, because I love you, oh, I'm not telling you to be on camera, you can keep crowding behind the chair if you want, no, <laughs> okay, hey, hey, sweetheart, I love you. I'm keeping all that. That was too much fun. You're not. I am keeping that in the video. That's too much fun, babe. Yeah, I am. I'm keeping that in the video. That's too much fun. I love you, babe. Oh, you, you, you okay. I guess I'll keep that in there and uh, be held. No. No. Well. Okay, I'll get some more fudge cake. All right. Do your chores, Mr. Uh, hey, hey, I'll do them. I'll do them right after, okay? I still got to edit this because there's stuff I got to change, but yeah. All right. All right. I'm going to show a particular part from this review that goes along with a great joke that, uh, that Doug made in his review of the second film that we just watched. Um, it comes late in the video though, so it might take a while to find it. But um, what's up, YouTube? No, no, no. no. <laughs> yes, babe. Oh yeah, this is a fun one. Actually, I'll I'll, I'll add this um, too. But uh, this rescue plan is epic, and it works. The Brits, then Elizabeth, orders the Red lied to Norrington. <laughs> what? I'll watch it later. I'm still recording. Yeah, I know. You're taking a long time. I want to show Well, it's partially because you interrupted me, too. I wanted a PBJ. I know, I know. And then you started recording yourself and doing goofy stuff. I love you, babe. You still got ass button there? That was recorded earlier. I can edit that in. It was a different recording than this one. What? People would rather have me be more expressive. <laughs> you crazy babe, I love you. Yeah, yeah, sweet sweeter, I would love to watch that movie again. Problem Child. Uh, sh sure, uh, Problem Child's a lot of fun, but uh, uh, anyway. It was already a grown up when we first saw okay. Elizabeth as a. Missed. Norrington was already a grown-up when we first saw Elizabeth as a child. This could be seen as grooming. He loved her <laughs> now that she's an adult, but he knew her when she was a child. However, you should also consider when this movie has taken place. It was a different time centuries ago. <laughs> I'm not saying that makes it okay, I'm just saying the facts. It's not okay. And I guess technically it isn't pedo file. Whoever came up with this is an asshole! Whoever came up with this hey. is an asshole! Ass. Hole? Asshole! Television makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I've decided I will try not to. I'm not going to try to look up where that scene was. I forget where it was. There was a particular meme joke I put in my review that I was wanting to show show um, because of what a uh, you know nostalgia critic had said about the, the with the Margot Robbie thing. Um, but anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. This was a blast. This took way longer than it should, but um. I hope you enjoy uh, the whole way through, and um, yeah, maybe I'll try to shorten the next reaction, because this review was actually shorter than the first one, um, I don't know, about like five minutes or something, 
but this reaction's definitely a lot longer. <laughs> a lot, of, a lot of stuff was going on behind the scenes here. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that'll do it. Thank you so much. Uh, stay tuned for some more Johnny Depp shorts. Uh, of course, they'll be coming. Um, and uh, please do check out that uh, video I showed with the with Knuckles in it. It's it's a lot of fun, it, and especially if you're actually into that Knuckles approves meme which was going on for a few years. Um, it's not really popular anymore, otherwise that video might have gotten a lot more views than it does now. It's It clearly came after the meme lost its steam, but... Oh, God, I rhymed. Ugh. Anyway, speaking of steam, Steamed Hams. I did a live-action Steamed Hams parody, if you want to check that out, too. It's called uh, Steamed Hams, but it's a live-action B-movie. I believe that's what I called it. I, I uploaded that in 2018. It was a long time ago. <laughs> before my channel even did reaction videos in 2020. Uh, and especially before the, you know, Johnny Depp shorts that I started doing last year. <clears throat> anyway. Um, yeah. Not much else to really say there. I thought it was a really good review. I thought, I know I said that uh, Doug was, or Nostalgia Critic was wrong of, of a few things he said in the previous review, but it was still an overall good review. It was, it was entertaining, um, and so was this. So anyway, that'll do it. Please like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell icon to add me notifications.